Hey guys, Robert Ham here again, coming at you with another tutorial. You can catch me over on Twitter at Rob Ham Photo. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook at forward slash Robert Ham Photography. Hey guys, today we're talking about the Surface Pro 3 again and how it works using Lightroom. We're also looking at the Surface Pro 3 and how we just want to do some real quick edits. You know, uh, if you're ever looking at your portraiture, and you go back and you realize, man, something just isn't right about a color somewhere, like these are beautiful colors right there, uh, then it's time to go ahead and make some adjustments. And I actually found a couple of adjustments to make. I'm actually in Lightroom. I'm using Creative, Qu uh, Creative Cloud 2015. And as I'm looking through these pictures right here, I see I got a lot of really good color. Boom, boom, boom. Right? But when we scroll back up, I see this little set of photos right here, right? Just looks a little bit yellow to me. Now I'm not using the uh, the actual um, what's it called? The pen right this second. I'm using the attached keyboard cover type cover. All right, there we go. Type cover is a little funky from time to time. It's got a pretty good typing experience, but anyways, that's outside of what we're talking about. When I look at some of these images, I look, and I like the color here, of course, it's a bright day, and it was actually really, really um, dreary that day, and some of the stuff, a little bit of, a little bit of detail and things, uh, I'm really looking at color right now, and I like that one. See, now I'm looking at the sand, look how the sand is looking gold in some of these. Yeah, I think i got to do something about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this image that I like right here and we're going to apply it to every other image that's there. And uh, it's real simple to do on Lightroom. What I'm going to do is raw, select the images that I want. I'm actually going to go to the, the front image right here. I'm selecting it with the mouse. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to right click on the right keyboard key uh, all the way down for all the photos that I think need to be in this selection. Now, if I let go of shift, I can actually scroll and see the photos to the left and right of my film strip. Of course, right now, trying to take uh, do the video, it's, it's acting like it doesn't like me. But, you know, hey, that's okay. So, yeah, I've got the photos selected that I want. And you can see all the photos are down here in the film strip. In the film strip, you can see that although they're all selected white or highlighted, this one is highlighted more than the rest. It may be difficult to see, but it's a subtlety you have to think about. What we're going to do is actually change that to this photo right here. Boom. Okay, now that's the color that I like. Since all the other ones are selected, I can come over here and use the sync tool. Now, currently it's on auto sync. Auto sync will take a bunch of images that currently have any number of photo adjustments. And when you're working on one image with auto sync on, you can adjust all the images at the same time by the exact same amount. So if you push highlights or shadows or clarity or whatever up by 20%, then that will happen to all of the other ones as well. Whatever adjustments you made before you started the auto sync will not be applied. Only the adjustment that you make with the auto sync will be applied. So let's say you had some black and white adjustments here, but you auto synced after you had already had this one black and white, but you... Uh, lowered all the highlights on this one and that was auto syncing with that one then it would maintain the black and white but it would also then lower the highlights okay we're going to not use auto sync though because we already have some settings that we want to keep we've already developed this image the way that we like we want to change the other images so that they match these settings okay we can come over here and turn auto sync off by clicking that little button right there, that little flash. Now you can see it says sync. Okay? That little clicker like a light switch. I really don't like them. And I've been making it a point to use Photoshop with just my touch input. Just to kind of give it a go and see how well it works with touch when the keyboard case is connected, or well, the keyboard type cover is connected. And it uh, seems to be pretty balmy because it's expecting input from the uh, the actual type cover rather than your finger or the actual intrigue pin. So there's a little bit of work that Adobe needs to do in order to get that just right. But overall, the touch interface without this type cover is excellent. So if you are trying to work in a more traditional environment, then just know that your touches will be um, a little less accurate. It looks I think they make the hot zones for your fingers much smaller, 
uh, more like the size of the mouse. But I digress. Anyways, I've got sync selected by clicking down the little light switch, and so now I'm just going to tap sync. When I do, a dialog box comes up. And this is not the dialog box that I want. If you see synchronized media, it's because we're in the wrong mode. I'm in library right now. So I want to be in develop in the develop module, and it should switch. There we go. We have all of our images once again. Auto sync is up. Once again, I need to switch that little light switch down. You can see now it says sync. Okay. And now I'm going to click the sync button. Well, before I did, I uh, <laughs> must have moved something. I don't know what I did. I touched something and that was no good. Let's go back to here. Okay, so here's what happened. I accidentally touched the little label for red right there. Remember, uh, the layouts is kind of like what we were talking about. Very, very odd layout, but I'm, I'm going to get out of there. I need to now go back to the library, select portraiture, which is where I was, come back over here to develop. In the develop module that I'm in, I'm going to scroll across once again and select all my images by shift and then right click all the way over or well, not right click but use the right arrow scroll through and just make sure I've got everything I want I've got one too many I'm gonna scroll back hold shift and left arrow and that will uh, bring me back to uh, where I want to be now that I've got them selected I'll go ahead and once again highlight the uh, the picture that I want to copy sync is now active I've got the little light switch down and I push sync it's gonna bring up a dialog box Let's bring this over here for you at this point in time it's going to sync everything that I've got checked with each one of these images already. Depending on what you would want to sync, right? You may not want to sync everything, but all these pictures were taken at the same time using the same lens within, you know, eight, maybe 10 minutes of each other. Sun's in basically the same spot. And I didn't change my white balance on the camera, so I should be able to push synchronize and then get the settings that I want applied to each individual image. And that's what's happening now. You can see some of these previews are being regenerated. Um, you can see them kind of popping up there. Great. Now, before I do anything else, I'm just going to come and check what do I like. Yes, there we go. I like the color. I can come over here and see the previous color. Okay. And uh, now you can see my current color. There you go. And when you look at it, you can see you can see that. So you see the different states and everything else. Uh, That's something that I really like. You can always go back to anything that you had done previously in your history tab right here. So if we make this just a little bit larger, so now we can see just a little bit more of our image. Looks nice. We're going to scroll through each one. I'm actually not going to touch. I'm just going to use a little, little button. Scrolling on the scroll button. Uh, she looks a little washed out right here. The whites on this screen it's not. There's a lot of detail right there. I can see all the detail. Uh, it's just that this is bright. Um, okay, so here's something that happened. Notice now that when we look back at our history adjustment, all right, this one looks good. But when we look at this one, look, our horizon's messed up. If we look at what it was prior to the actual change, we're going to see that it was different, just slightly different. Okay, so it was correct. I'd already corrected for the uh, the um, horizon you're going to see in just a second that it bounces and changes. See, the, the horizon changed. So I'm going to command or control D to deselect all images. I'm going to come back over here. And at this point in time, nice horizon. Uh, I don't like that horizon, so basic. Let's come over here. Tap. Turn this off. Okay, and now I'm just going to adjust for that horizon again. Something like that. So, click uh, reset once again, and I'm just going to adjust for that horizon. Okay, done. Bingo. Come back over here. Yeah. All right, that one looks good. Close. Come back over here. When you're not using the pen, it makes it a little funky. And also, you're seeing some real-world usage right now. I've got lots of stuff going on in the background right now. 
Um, and so it seems like Lightroom has uh, has given up the ghost a little bit to me. It's acting a little funky. The fan's on in the background. And normally, if you guys have seen my other tutorials, that doesn't happen. But maybe I shouldn't be uploading pictures to my web server and everything else. I'm doing three or four different things. And uh, let's see. Come back over here. So I'm just kind of giving you an example of what you would have to do to go ahead. That one looks good just the way it is. They've jumped. That one looks good because it's all based on this one. Nice. 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 Okay. Bingo. There you have it. Okay, great. So we've got some really nice images right there. Once again, this is Robert Ham coming at you with a tutorial using Lightroom Creative Cloud on the Surface Pro 3. And there you have it. We've just gone ahead and done a batch, uh, a batch adjustment, batch photo adjustment. That way it can save you a lot of time. So we talked about sync. We talked about auto sync. We talked about how to use those two things in order to make uh, changes real quickly. Hey, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. There are more coming out. And if you have any thoughts or what your workflow is, go ahead and post it down below. And once again, catch you on the flip side.